In this lecture, I'm going to relate moles with chemical equations and to briefly revise what uh, I'm going to discuss uh, what it was meant by one mole. Now, what one mole means, it's a unit for counting and we count all sorts of things. So in chemistry, we're going to count atoms, we're going to count ions, we're going to count molecules, we're going to count all sorts of different particles. So let's uh, call them generally particles. So if I have one mole of any particle, that would indicate that I have uh, 6.02 into 10 raised to the power 23 particles. And that's a very large number. It's uh, 6 followed by 23 zeros. So because in chemistry, we have a lot of atoms, a lot of molecules and a lot of atoms and ions so we need a very very large unit for counting we can't use million because a million would be a very small comparatively a comparative unit so for example a million is another unit for counting but a million only stands for if i have one million particles that would mean that that's one in, into 10 is power six that's one followed by six zeros so that's a that's a very tiny numbers when you're counting atoms similarly you can't count them using a uh, thousand thousand is another unit for counting so if I use a thousand that would just mean that's one followed by three zeros or one into ten is power three so it's a it's going to be a very small number so you wouldn't be counting atoms atoms are present in a very very large number so so just understand that a mole is simply a unit for counting atoms if you have two moles of something that would mean if I have two moles of a particle that would just mean that one mole stands for 6.02 into 10 to the power 23. So two moles would be double that. So it would be two multiplied by 6.02 into 10 to the power 23. So I hope you're familiar with what a mole stands for. And you can go back and revise uh, topics, especially related to moles and converting moles to numbers and numbers to moles. And you can revise that. And now we're going to move towards uh, chemical equations. Now, I have written this chemical balanced chemical equation in front of you where a sodium atom is reacting with a Cl2 molecule and uh, it's producing a molecule, uh, a compound uh, NaCl. So, so this is a chemical equation. So, uh, now I've balanced that chemical equation as well. So I have two sodium atoms reacting with one molecule of chlorine and it's producing an NaCl compound, so two formula units of NaCl. Now, if you look at the ratio in which they are reacting, you would, you'll notice that two sodium atoms react with one molecule of chlorine and they're going to produce two formula units of NaCl. Now, that's the ratio in which uh, sodium and chlorine are reacting and that's the ratio in which NaCl would be produced. Now, if I change something, if I have four sodium atoms, now, according to the ratio, uh, if you look at the ratio, two sodium atoms required one, required one molecule of chlorine. Now, if I have four sodium atoms, then according to ratio, I would need two molecules of chlorine. And again, I can use ratios. One chlorine produces two NaCl. So if I have two chlorines, they should produce, they should produce four NaCl. And remember that an equation tells you the simplest or simplified ratio in which reactants are reacting with each other and products are being produced. So in this case, the simplest ratio is two sodium atoms react with one chlorine molecule and they produce two formula units of NaCl. So vice versa, if I use the ratio, if I have four sodium atoms, that would require two chlorine molecules and that would produce four NaCl formula units. In a similar way, what if I had 100 sodium atoms? And I can use the ratio again, and I want to find out, figure out how many chlorine molecules would be needed. What I can do is I can use ratio. I, I know that two sodiums react with one chlorine molecule. So if I have 100, I hope you are familiar with the unitary method. So I know that two sodiums react with one chlorine, so 100 would react with X, and I can cross multiply. And if I cross multiply, x would come out to be it would be equal to x is equal to 100 1 multiplied by 100 and x would come out to be equal to 50 so if i have 100 sodium atoms they would need 50 chlorine molecules and we can also predict how much NaCl would be produced so one chlorine 
produces two NaCl molecules. That means the amount of chlorine, the amount of NaCl would be twice that the amount of chlorine. So I can use ratios again. I know that one chlorine produces uh, two NaCl's. So if I have 50, then that should produce x and I can again cross multiply and if I cross multiply it comes out to be x would come out to be equal to 2 into 50 which is equal to 100 again. So the point I'm trying to make is you must understand a balanced equation gives you the ratio in which the reactants and the products are being formed. So it's two re reacting with one chlorine and it's producing two formula units of NaCl. So it's it's not the actual amount. The actual amount could be different. You could have four sodiums. Then if you have four sodiums, according to the ratio given in the equation, you would have two chlorines reacting with it and four NaCl being produced. If you have 100 sodium atoms, then you would have 50 chlorine molecules according to the ratio, which is two ratio, one. So you would have 50 chlorine molecules and that would produce 100 molecules of of formula units of NaCl. So we can, um, you need to remember that this ratio over here that I am underlining, this would remain constant, but your amount of reactants and products would change. So let's uh, do one more thing. Let's take, let's say if I have 500 sodium atoms, then that would need its two ratio one. You can use ratio f that 500 would react with X, and we know that two reacts with one. So we can cross multiply and it would come out to be 500 is equal to two into X and X would come out to be 250. So that's 250. And similarly, we can find out the amount of NaCl being produced. We know that one chlorine produces two NaCl formula units. So 250 would produce twice that. So it's going to be 500. Now, one thing that we discussed is that we don't count count atoms in reality in thousands or hundreds or billions or millions. We use the unit moles because we have a lot of atoms. So instead of using 100, uh, 400 atoms or 500 atoms, we would probably be counting them in moles. So it's the same idea applies exactly like the way you're using ratios for hundreds and for thousands and for millions. You're going to use the same ratio for a mole as well. So let's say I have... Uh, three moles of sodium atom. Now I know that two sodium atoms react with one, so chlorine would be half the amount of sodium atoms. So we can use ratios. So if two reacts with one, three would react with 1.5 moles of chlorine. And similarly, we can use ratios further. One chlorine produces two units of NaCl, that is double the amount. So if I have 1.5 moles, the amount of NaCl would be three moles. In this second example, you can see that magnesium is reacting with uh, nitrogen. So that's magnesium reacting with nitrogen. It's producing magnesium nitrate and that's the formula. And it's a balanced equation. And the equation sh uh, states that there are three magnesiums reacting with one molecule of uh, nitrogen. And it's producing one uh, formula unit of magnesium nitride. So the ratio is that three magnesiums react with one nitrogen and they produce one magnesium nitri nitride. So that ratio is the simplest ratio. So what if you had uh, what if you had 4.5 moles of magnesium? Now I want to find out how much how much nitrogen would I need to react with 4.5 moles. So what I can do is I can use ratios. I know that three reacts with one. So 4.5 moles is going to react with X, and I can cross multiply, and this would come out to be equal to 3X would be equal to 4.5 and my x would come out to be equal to 4.5 divided by 3 and I can use a calculator so you can do this on any normal scientific calculator Four point, it would be 4.5 divided by 3 which comes out to be 1.5 so you have 1.5 moles of nitrogen that would be needed to react with 4.5 moles and similarly, you can figure out the amount of magnesium nitride that would be produced by using ratios. You can either, you can use either ratios. You can either pick nitrogen and compare its ratio with magnesium nitride, or you can pick magnesium and compare its ratio with magnesium nitride. So I, I'm going to pick magnesium and compare its ratio with magnesium nitride. So 
what I have is that I know that uh, I have three magnesiums. The equation states that three magnesiums are going to going to produce one magnesium nitride. So the ratio is three ratio one. So if I have 4.5 moles of magnesium, the amount of magnesium nitride would produce would be X and I can use cross, uh, I can cross multiply, use the unitary method and my X would again come out to be exactly the same. It's going to be 4.5 divided by 3 which would come out to be 1.5 moles so you can use ratios and you can figure out the moles I was given I was given that 4.5 moles of magnesium so I figured out that 4.5 moles of magnesium are going to react with 1.5 moles of nitrogen according to the ratio 3 ratio 1 and it's going to produce 1.5 moles of magnesium nitride because it also had a ratio of 1